So uh, in, it was November 3rd of, of 1969 uh, that, uh, so it was yourself and Gordon Poles, is that correct? That, that, um, that Gordon were Poles and a, fel- and, and a fellow named Jim Peters. Okay. And Jim was another student at the school. Wow. And, and so, uh, okay. Howard Good uh, came to the school, so did Mike. And uh, they would come down there, but they weren't actually involved when we first started. They came mm-hmm. later and helped out. They were both highly involved at the school in music. And so Wonderful. Uh, they had other things they were doing as well. So, so you, so you, you find a building and, and how, how did you find the building? I'm just, and, and where you the location, how, how did that come about? Do you remember? You know, Jacob, this has been 50 years ago, so I don't remember all of it. I, I do mm-hmm. remember though, uh, the first time that, uh, we were really completely broke. I mean, mm-hmm. we had no money whatsoever. And it, when you're working with, uh, homeless people and and drug addicts and you know the problems humanity gets into without christ uh, you run out of money pretty quick because uh, somebody's always hungry they need a mm-hmm. meal you can't give them money because they'll just go get drunk or get drugged so you have to take them to a place buy them a meal and so it, that's what we did and uh, yeah. so we would just we were working a little part-time jobs while going to college. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, unlike a lot of people at that time, uh, I was on the GI Bill, so I had a little money coming in, but not much. And so uh, we worked at part-time jobs plus the GI Bill, and, and Gordon worked part-time job as well as his teaching. Mm-hmm. But we would, we would uh, I remember being completely out of money, and the rent was coming up the next day. And you said the rent was uh, $125 a month at the time? Right. Okay. And we, I remember we, Joanne and Gordon and I got on our knees and we asked God to provide the money we needed for that rent. Mm-hmm. And the next day when we went down to the underground fish, there was an envelope that somebody had slipped under the door at night hmm. with, a, with $125 in it. We told no one of that mm-hmm. need. But mm. God just applied it. So, and then those sorts of things, I could just go on and on about that. Things happened all the time like that yeah. to provide, to keep that place open. But really, the, the, I have to say that the spiritual uh, force behind the underground fish, besides the Lord God and how he got us started, was Gordon Pulse. Gordon was older, more mature. He understood life a little better, mm. and he uh, he began to do a lot of writing. We were all writing at that time uh, articles uh, to hand out in town about Christ, mm. uh, but he would edit everything, and then mm. he did the bulk of the writing. And then we would uh, make up five, six hundred to a thousand copies of it, and we would hand these out all over uh, Grand Rapids, downtown area. Mm-hmm. Until we ran out of papers, it was uh, like the underground fish magazine. <laughs> so, so what was the content it was, it was of it? Did it say, so was it like? Did it say underground fish? And then oh, yeah, did you have like fish, had a fish on it? It, looked, it, it was actually a pretty good printing job, uh, but uh, uh, it, it it was what we did. We handed out just like a track. It was a track mm-hmm. only with stories in it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so those would catch people's attention, and then mm-hmm. uh, we would talk to them while we were handing it out, obviously, and then many would come back, and then they would start dropping in there uh, but just for coffee because they were cold. So, <laughs> so that was the primary function of, of having the building, was it just a, a gathering place? It was a place for, you, you provided coffee and... More, you know, uh, you know warm from the... Okay. Uh, cold winds in that Michigan there got and it. it got really cold there and it snowed and it was a mess mm-hmm. <laughs> so mm-hmm. uh, coming from California I was cold the whole year the first mm-hmm. year <laughs> but here we were we had this nice warm building and we brought people back there and then people just started dropping in it became a drop-in place we gave free coffee so okay. somehow we'd get the money and buy the coffee and <laughs> keep keep the pot on so 
that's all we offered. We didn't even have chairs, Jacob. We, <laughs> we sat on the floor. Uh, it, uh, it, I was it about was to ask weird, you. We're talking 60s. It was a weird time and a weird place. And uh, so we didn't really have uh, uh, churches helping us. We had students that would come in. They found out about it. The students would start coming in and they would uh, they would start witnessing and they'd see people come to Christ, get excited, tell their friends. And so it was pretty much just staffed with uh, with students from our little Bible college. What was and the then, name of the Bible college uh, that, that you were at? Uh, that uh, that Bible college is now uh, it merged with Cornerstone. Okay. So it it, it was a, just a small little Bible okay. college. Okay. But uh, it was interesting because uh, one of the articles uh, that I wrote uh, that we handed out in the streets mm-hmm. uh, actually had a real negative impact because it was bad theology. Uh, of course, I didn't know that. I didn't have any theology, basically. You know, I just knew that people needed Jesus, and I was trying to tell them about him. But, uh, but I really knew very little. Like I said, I had two formal—I mean, two formal months of Bible college when we started this thing. Right? Though mm-hmm. so, uh, Gordon couldn't control all of us. <laughs> he, he tried. He really was kind about it. But, uh, but somehow this one slipped out there, and. Uh, we handed out a lot of copies. One of them got back to the school, and I don't know exactly, and I, I really, uh, it just wasn't a pleasant experience for the school to have their students uh, writing bad theology, and uh, so <laughs> very, very Arminian uh, kind of <laughs> theology. Wow. So, uh, uh... So this started in, in November 3rd, and uh, Gordon Poles, this other man, I think you said Peter, that you mentioned. Uh, yeah, Jim, James Peters. Yeah. Tim, James he, Peters. He was another Vietnam veteran, like mm-hmm. myself. And so, yeah. Wow. So James Peters, and then you had students come to join and, and be a part of it. And and I would say but the main the goal or... or uh, uh, thrust for the, the mission for the underground fish was to obviously yeah provide warmth and um, which is a, a it could meet a human need for people that were on the streets but uh, it seems that it, it was really to draw people to christ and and to uh, minister to people and then share the gospel yeah. is that true yeah and it sounds it sounds a little weird today because uh, i see ministries today that young people are doing and uh I mean, they they take care of food for people. They take care of clothing for people. They they have, I mean, money to really do some wonderful things to help people. Mm. We were really poor, Jacob. I mean, so mm-hmm. poor that uh, you know the church mice probably were in better shape. <laughs> mm-hmm. So uh, it was uh, it was really uh, just basically just sharing the gospel. We, we didn't. We couldn't do a social program except for feeding people that were starving, you know, and we would do that until we ran out of money. Wow. So uh, I want to ask a couple questions about uh, the underground fish ministry while you were there. If you have any uh, memorable uh, times or if there was moments that just uh, were positive. I know you mentioned the story about how God miraculously, you know, he provided rent uh, for uh, that a month that you, you didn't know how you were going to pay the rent and you saw God's provision. Uh, is there every, any account? every month there was provision, but that <laughs> that month was the first one and we we really learned to trust God. Mm. That, that really helped us because it was like uh, we didn't know what we we're going to do the next day, whether we were going to have to shut down or not. But God, mm. uh, for some reason, God wanted that building uh, to stay uh, there downtown. There weren't a lot of ministries in, in the downtown area that the people we were seeing. And so it was uh, it was probably uh, it was needed, but it needed a lot more people that knew more than certainly I did. Mm. And so but we saw good things. happen. we saw people come to Christ and that was exciting. Uh, I, I remember one time there was a, a kid who he was really a kid. He was 17 years old. He drops into the fish the guy's absolutely stoned on acid mm. 
Mm -hmm. And he comes into the fish, and I remember Howard Good was there, and Howard uh, was spending time with him, and uh, so Howard leads him to Christ, Mm -hmm. and uh, the kid goes, uh, well, I want you to come back to the party that I just left, and I want you to tell all of them about Jesus. I want you to give them the verses you just gave me, Mm -hmm. and uh, so they can be saved too. So uh, Howard took off with him. And uh, about two hours, he came back. And so I, we asked him, well, how'd it go, Howard? He said, well, he said, uh, we walked in this house, and it was completely dark, and people were laying everywhere. They were all stoned. He said, uh, and he turns on, and this guy that brought him there turned on the lights, <laughs> which wasn't a big hit. <laughs> and then he said, now give them the verses. And so yeah. he said, I did. He said, I, I started to. Uh, quoting verses about uh, Jesus saves, <laughs> but uh, they, they weren't, uh, they weren't too open to it, but this guy, uh, this guy was, and he became a regular down there after that. So we're thankful for him and many other lives that were changed, but uh, we had that we had successes, but we had troubles too. Yeah, I, I was actually curious about um, in an area like that, obviously, you know, Satan doesn't want uh, anybody encroaching on his territory, which he thinks is his territory. And oh, so I'm yeah. sure there was spiritual opp- oppression and spiritual attacks, and that probably manifested in, in other ways. What are some of the stories? In, in that? Well, I probably would have to say, Jacob, if you want to, uh, if you want to discourage young people, the way you do it, is you come against everything they're trying to do, yeah. even if they're not doing it correctly. Right. If it, it, you know, if they're zealous, but they don't have a lot of knowledge, uh, you try to come alongside them and direct them. But we were meeting a lot of op- opposition from the churches. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, they didn't like what we were doing. They didn't really know what we were doing, but they didn't like what they read, I guess. And, and I, I would have to say that most of the theology that we were uh, handing out was pretty darn good because Gordon wrote most of it. Mm-hmm. And all of his articles were, uh, I mean, if you looked at him today, you would go, he's a bright guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he, he really understood the Bible and was able to communicate it on a level that, that the average unsaved person could at least uh, understand the gospel and see that there's some truth here. Mm. But anyways, uh, the few articles that <laughs> didn't have the content right, uh, that had great opposition from, uh, first of all, from the school. <laughs> mm-hmm. And there were really good people at that school. There were great professors there, great people there. But I think uh, there were some people on the board and so forth that uh, told them uh, they didn't want their students down there. Oh wow! And so so basically, they, they discouraged other uh, the students to uh, from doing ministry uh, at the underground fish because well, of they, the they didn't things. they didn't discourage it. They forbid it. You, you, oh wow! You would not go down there. And oh, wow. they didn't tell uh, they didn't tell Gordon or I or Jim Peters we couldn't go back. But but huh. uh, basically, they they told the students that it wasn't an authorized place to go. Uh, so, uh, a few students kept coming, but, uh, but now we're in opposition. And so, uh, mm. so that, that's why I say, uh, boy, if you ever see kids who are, are, are really excited about the Lord and you want them to move on forward, then you, you help direct their theology, you help them to learn, you spend time with them, you go down and, and, and get in the cold with them and, uh, Go out in the streets with them. You don't just uh, you don't just criticize what they're doing. And so, mm-hmm. uh, but a miraculous thing happened, uh, mm-hmm. and it really was. Every time somebody gets saved, it's a miracle. Mm-hmm. But uh, there was a, a a drunk, an old man. Really, he was really old, probably in his seventies. And he had been a drunk, we found out, for 30 years. Mm. And he stumbled in one night to get warm. And somebody shared the gospel with him. I don't remember who it was. And he received the Lord. 
and um, his life changed dramatically. I mean, he would come to Bible studies that we had there. He would, he would, he just it became his church, and he uh, he began to his life just changed in such a radical way. And I don't remember whose dad he was, but somebody on the board of trustees or somebody uh, somebody found out that this guy his one of the guys that, that was pretty involved in in the school his wife's it was his wife's father okay so so so, it, you're talking, big so, so, so you're talking about at, at the bible college at that right. time the one that had been discouraged or they forbade their students to go there so he it was uh, like a board member of the school is what you're saying well, correct? I, I, and I don't remember that, that. That okay he, what he was but it, it was a, it was a, a radical change. They had brought okay. us in basically at one point, Gordon and I and Jim, and the, they had several of the, uh, of the board that, that said to us they didn't like what we were doing. Basically, <laughs> you know, went through all that, and 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 Jim was like me, a Vietnam vet, and uh, uh, he he wasn't very kind in the mm -hmm. way he, he, he dealt with them. Uh, he said, well, none of you have even been down to the fish. Right. And he said, if you're afraid to come down there, he said, why don't you just put on shades and a top coat and come down incognito, see what we're doing before you criticize us. Well, that didn't go over big. You know, you don't talk to <laughs> you don't talk to adults like that when you're 18, right? Or mm -hmm. Just, you know, not the way to do it. So I think uh, that didn't help our case much. <laughs> but they, they really hadn't been down. But when this guy got saved, and it was just a short time later uh, when this uh, this man was saved down there, and uh, things changed. Then they, they made it one of the Christian service assignments. <laughs> How about that? That, that? Students could choose. So, so, so you're we saying it was, from, yeah. We went from not knowing if we were going to have enough people to staff the fish to witness to people, to it being a Christian service assignment. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so, uh, so things did uh, change at that time. But I have to say, Jacob, that probably uh, in my Christian life, because uh, I was so young in the faith when they did that. It really destroyed me at that time. You know, I was just so discouraged. And I remember uh, uh, there was one other event uh, that was very similar. They had a, uh, an evangelist uh, that uh, had asked us to, to invite people to come to uh, his meeting. And it was mm. going to be held at a, a, big, uh, a big church. And we were uh, just basically starting to get, you know, a reputation of people that were trying to serve the Lord, even though we were, you know, made a lot of mistakes. But uh, I remember how hard we worked to get people at this guy's meeting. Mm. And we brought a crowd. <laughs> it was a crowd of young people. And I remember... Uh, his sermon wasn't very, it wasn't very engaging. I'll just say that. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then he spent about uh, about 15 to 20 minutes uh, trying to collect an offering. Mm. Yeah, you, you have to understand we've got street people in here who don't have any money. We didn't even have any money. <laughs> And, right. and we've got this big crowd here, and this guy's begging for money for 15 minutes. Well, I got up and walked out, and when I got up and walked out, practically the whole crowd left with me. So it wasn't, but I was just so frustrated, you know, because we we asked no one for money. We asked right. God for what we needed, and God provided everything. And I'm thinking, does this guy even understand the kind of audience he has here? Mm. I mean, I understand that evangelists need to be paid, but that wasn't the place to do it. That wasn't the time to do it. And again, those things are so discouraging when you're young and you're, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> you're trying to work with homeless and, and really people who've been caught 
really by Satan. They're, they've been taken captive by him at his will. And you're trying to help them get mm. released, you know. Mm. And so those uh, have a pretty negative impact on you as a young person. So, right. I don't know. I don't know how the other guys felt about all of that. Mm -hmm. I just looking back at my life, I, I can see that that had a real negative impact on it. So it makes me want to really encourage young people, uh, especially when they're wanting to do ministry, even if they're not doing it just exactly the way I think it should be done or the music's not exactly what I like. I don't, it doesn't matter to me. I, I just want to see them grow and get excited mm -hmm. about the Lord and, and have a ministry. So. Yeah. Wow. Uh, later on, I could think through that, but at the time, it was just discouraging. Yeah.